Hello, and welcome to Module 1 of the Farmers Market and Local Food Promotion Program Grant Writing Workshop. This module is the Grant Program's Overview. My name is Jody Ellett. I am the Local Foods Coordinator for Purdue Extension and the statewide training contact for the Ag, Ag Marketing Service Grant Programs for 2015. These two grant programs the Farmers Market Promotion Program and the Local Food Promotion Program have funding authorized through the 2014 Farm Bill through 2018. Every spring, the application period is announced online through the USDA press release and on the, their Local Food USDA page. And this year's deadline is the 14th of May. We're conducting training this year to enable those applying for these grants to submit robust grants that are innovative and new and different and replicable. So what does all that mean? Well, we really increased our number of farmers markets, a recent economic research service research paper showed that there's a flattening of farmers market sales in the US. And so some of that low hanging fruit may have already been taken in some regions. And so growth continues, but it's really slowing down and maybe leveling off. And so they really want this growth, this grant program to explore those new growth opportunities. How do we build on the local food components that are in place and strengthen them? What's the innovation in the new local food system? So we'll start with the local food promotion program grant. Again, the bottom line is to increase the consumption of local food. But this program, generally that food is going through an intermediary. So from farm to somewhere else, to somewhere else, to the consumer. So there's, it's all about the supply chain for local and regional food systems. There are planning grants and implementation grants for this program. The planning grants can include market research, feasibility studies, business planning. Maybe you've got a really great idea, um, but you really just need to know if it's possible in your area. You need to do some market research. You do need a 25% match for this grant. It's a one-year grant, and the awards are from $5,000 to $25,000. Implementation grants take a little longer. And again, somewhere in that supply chain, what are these local and regional food businesses that move food from the farm to the consumer? Those grants are $25,000 to $100,000. Again, they require a 25% match, and it's a two-year grant program. The Farmer's Market Promotion Program is promoting local food to consumers, but from direct farm to consumer. So if you think about the ways that you can buy directly on a, from a farmer, Often those happen in farmer's markets or roadside stands, community supported agriculture programs or CSAs, agritourism going out to the farm, doing food events where farmers are in attendance and selling their food. That's really, it's farmer to consumer. That program does not require a match. Those awards are from fifteen dollars to $100,000, and they can be completed in two years. So which grant program? Like we noted, the Local Food Promotion Program is focused on the supply chain, those intermediaries, the distribution, storage, processing of local food. And the Farmer's Market Promotion Program is focused on the direct consumer marketing channels. Please note that all these projects that are proposed must benefit more than one producer or individual. And when I say projects, 
it's understood that this is something innovative, it's a project, it's not um, money to fund your startup business. Here's a decision tree that might help identifying which where your project might be. And again, if you have questions, feel free to email me or email the grant programs administrators in Washington, D.C. that you can um, get their email online. Here are some project examples from last year's grant awards. Promotion of new coastal farmer fishermen's market and provide vendors with good agricultural practices training or GAPS training. Local food promotion activity, conducting a food hub feasibility study and business plan. Creating an incubator market for new farmers and food processors and provide the technical assistance. The projects, sometimes it's nice to sort of look at the end, end of what you're doing and to work backwards. And you're going to be scored on these five things. The purpose, your approach, the budget, the impact you're going to have, and how you're going to tell people about it. What's your outreach? So in the purpose, is there a clear need? Have you stated the issue clearly? Do the objectives of your project and the goals of the grant program match? They may not match, and there may be a different grant opportunity that is more relevant for your pro project idea. And do the outcomes of your project benefit the intended audience? So really thinking about who is your audience, it might be multiple, and how does your project benefit them? For your approach. You're going to be scored on if it's well written, and we'll actually talk about that a little bit. Is it realistic, and is it possible to meet goals and objectives? Are the personnel on the project qualified? Are the partnerships appropriate? The budget of your proposal are, some are plain and simple. Is that allowed? It's a yes, no answer. But then the fuzzy gray area is, do the items in your budget clearly correlate with the purpose and goals of your project? What sort of impact are you looking to have with your idea? Did you clearly describe those impacts in your expected outcomes? How are you going to measure that? What metrics will be used to measure that and then how are you going to tell people about it? So how do you plan to publicize your project activities? How will you engage people? How are you going to measure that engagement? And what's your long-term sustainability of the project? So you'll be evaluated by a panel of grant reviewers, and there'll be a, a scoring criteria, and then an ev evaluation of the capacity for your, you and your partners to meet the objectives, and then, of course, the evaluator's perspective. So when they read the proposal, that subjective perspective is part of the process which makes them competitive. And then so what? So a grant reviewer is going to sit and say, okay, so what if I don't fund this project? And you want to make it very clear that they have to fund this project because it's a really good idea and there's a real need. What makes your application, what gives you an edge? What gives you a competitive edge over others? They're really looking for innovative concepts, good ideas, creative solutions to local food distribution. They want things that can be replicable elsewhere. How could you do what you're doing in your community 
in some other place. What are the impacts after the grant period? They're, if they're investing federal dollars in your program, what is the lasting impact of those federal dollars? And telling them clearly how that's going to be impactful. And then again, is your project sustainable and how do you plan to sustain the project? All projects must benefit more than one producer or individual. Who's eligible for this? It's a pretty long list. It's a pretty wide open grant opportunity. Agricultural businesses or cooperatives, community supported agriculture networks or associations. And I just wanted to clarify that, that CSA networks are groups of CSA farmers who work cooperatively to distribute their CSA shares. CSA associations are defined as those that um, distribute food on behalf of farmers. Those are clearly defined in the request for proposal document. Who else is eligible? Economic development corporations, local governments, nonprofit corporations and institutions of higher learning, producer networks, producer associations, public benefit corporations, regional farmers market authorities, and tribal governments. We'll be covering the development of your idea in module two.